When it comes to artificial intelligence, I really enjoy tools that make my life easier. I don't like tools that uh, edit my image for me, but if it can help me remove things or if it can help me uh, with noise reduction, I am all for it. Even in my business, if it can help me write things, I am all for it and I am here for AI. I love it. What I don't love is the new generative fill in Photoshop. Now, there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, every time I've tried to generate something with it that I've typed in, it just looks like crap. Okay, let's just face it. It doesn't look great. I never get a good result and it's just not worth me using. But using generative fill to fill in areas of an image that are very tricky, it is a wondrous tool, but it has one major downfall. Here we are in November 2023, and the major problem that I see with generative fill is that it doesn't match noise patterns in high resolution images. If you're using small images, you won't even notice it. If you're using images from a cell phone, you probably won't even notice it. But if you're using images from a high resolution camera like a Sony A1 or something similar, you're not gonna be very happy with the results that you get from generative fill when you start to look deep. Now we already did a tutorial talking about content aware fill, the remove tool and generative fill and how they stack up in different types of patterns here. This is the companion tutorial to that. If you missed that, go ahead and click in the video above at the end of this video or in the description below so you can get some of the background research that I did to get to this point. Now let's talk about how we can actually use generative fill in a way that can work in our image. So I wanna show you how you can use generative fill even on a high resolution image this image is let's see image size is 7952 by 5300 this is a rather large image this wasn't from my a1 this is from my sony a7r3 i believe but there are some things that i want to get rid of in this image i'm going to zoom in here and i'm going to show you two areas that i want to get rid of number one is this twig right here and then we're going to do something bigger like this piece right here so I'll zoom in right here and I'll just go ahead and hover right over this and just make a selection for it. Go into the generative fill dialog and just say generate. Now, after it does its work, you might be like, dang, that's pretty good. It removed that twig pretty darn well, didn't it? Wow. Okay. I kind of like this version of it. Definitely like this version because it didn't put more stuff in there. But what you do, but what you have to do is you have to zoom in really close and you may not even see it in this, in this generative fill that we do here, but you would definitely see it in the bigger one. What's happening here is that generative fill can only fill in a space that's 1024 by 1024 at any given selection. That's why a lot of people will take multiple selections that are small, like the 1024 selection, and then use generative fill in each individual one. Now, if you know how long generative fill takes, that is not something I'm about to incorporate in my workflow, not at all. And nor is it acceptable because it's going to go against your credits because now we're in November and we don't even want to get down that rabbit hole because now all of the internet monsters are going to come out and berate me for even showing this. But here's the cool part. Even when this is set to 1024, I can still fix this up. But we have to look at what's wrong with this generative fill versus what's right with the rest of the image. So we have to zoom in really close at the granular level. Look right here at this part of the waterfall where we have uh, what looks like noise, okay? Because we're zoomed in at 400% or something like that. And over here, we don't have noise. This is blurry. And maybe I'm getting too granular on this, but you'll notice it if you ever try to create a generative fill from a large area, okay? Maybe I'm looking too deep into this, but if you do select a large area, you're gonna see this blurriness and be like, why does it look like this? Again, on the small one, you're probably not gonna notice it because the selection that we made was more than likely about a 1024 selection. It was very small, so it could fill it in. But on this bigger area here, let's make a bigger selection. Let's go down here and make a much bigger selection for this. Let's get rid of this entire log. So I'm going to click right here all the way up over here with my polygonal lasso tool and just see if I can get rid of this log. I'm kind of being a little haphazard with it, but that's okay. We'll fill it in and see what happens. All right. So now we'll zoom in here and look at these selections. I think here you'll probably see it a little bit better. Let's take a look at some of these different ones here. I think this will be a good example for this one, uh, primarily because we can look at the detail that it's lacking here and the noise that it's lacking here. Okay. So as we zoom in closer, this is a big problem I see with the current state of generative fill in November of 2023. It will render a lot of really great stuff. However, it doesn't render the same noise pattern and it definitely does not render the same uh, sharpness. That's because we have a very large scale image and we're telling this limited tool that can only go 1024 by 1024 to basically remove this big area. So the limitation that we're seeing right now is that we've made a big selection, okay? And we are telling generative fill to fill it in. 
Well, if it can only do 1024 by 1024, and we're telling it to fill in this space, it has to go from this to this. So what it's going to do is it's going to take the rendering that it would do for that 1024 and then blow it up to fill 2048, 3060, whatever that might be. Okay. And when it does that, we're, we're going to get a reduction in noise. We're going to get a reduction in sharpness. It's the same thing as if you were to take a small image and try to blow it up and make it large, you're going to see the same problems. So how do we fix this? Well, we can't really fix it, but I have come up with a workaround and that is to sharpen it and add noise to the sharpened layer. Now I have made an action for you for this where all we have to do is press one hotkey and I'll talk about that in a second, but I will go into how we would make this match this. So the first thing I need to do here is basically make a duplicate copy of this. Press command or control J. Then I need to press alt or option and make sure that this selection only goes into this space here. I do that just to just to add a level of security so that we know for a fact that when I run my high pass and all the other things I'm going to do, it's only going to go into this space here. Now I need to change this to the linear light blend mode because I'm basically going to be sharpening this with high pass and I use linear light to do that. Now I'm going to take this at 15% and now I can go in and work my high pass sharpen. So I'm going to go to filter, I'm going to go to other and then go to high pass. Okay. So now when we see this, this high pass sharpen that we see here is trying to give us more sharpness for this object. It is going to create a little bit more contrast too, which I think actually works for this image. Um, but what we need to do here is just dial in the sharpness level so that this relatively matches close to this and it might not be perfect. We don't want to take it too high. Typically within, you know, one to three pixels is going to be okay. And then we'll press okay. Now, one of the things that's governing that is the fill dialog here. So if I go to the fill and I move this up, it's going to make that work a little bit harder and a little bit faster. Okay. So that's good to know. But what we also need to do here is we need to add some noise because if we move into here, we notice that there is definitely no noise in this area of the generative fill, which we can see a difference between the white here, the white here, the gray here, the gray here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add noise, but I'm going to add noise specifically to this high pass area. So I'm gonna to go to filter, gonna to go to noise and then add noise. Now the noise that I wanna add is gonna be a uniform noise and it's gonna be monochromatic. I don't wanna add color noise here, just uniform noise. Now the percentage that I want here, this is where we try to match the noise pattern that we see in the image. So I recommend going low and then slowly starting to dial this up until the noise patterns match from here to there. Okay, so that's starting to look pretty good. We're getting some noise there. We got some detail there. I would do the high pass sharpening first, then do the noise. That way you're not high passing uh, the noise, but we do want to do the noise on the same layer as the high pass. That's the, the cool part here because now we can control how much noise comes through here with the fill and how much sharpness comes through here. And here's the, the last part of this. Once we look at this, we're like, okay, now we got the noise dialed in beautifully. We got the sharpness dialed in beautifully, but look, we have noise in our highlight areas that we don't really want. So here I'll double click on this and I'm going to use blend if to pull the noise away from those highlight areas and then press alt or option to feather it in to the midtones. Okay. So now that is dialed in exactly where we need it to be. We've got a pretty decent sharpening and pretty decent noise added to this. So it looks like it actually fits in this space instead of just being slapped here like a sticker because the noise and the detail did not match. Now I know exactly what you're thinking. You're like, Blake, <laughs> I've got to remember what a high pass is, which you didn't even cover that very well. I've got to remember what linear light blend mode does, which you didn't cover that in this tutorial. And then I've got to also know how to add noise and I have to know, I get it. I get it. I don't want you to have to remember all that stuff. So you know what I've done? I've actually created an action for you that once you download and install and all you have to do is download it and then double click it, it'll give you this option here where all you have to do after it's installed is press shift and F2 and it'll automatically run you through the sharpening dialogue. You press okay and the noise dialogue. So let's say we've got this dialed in. It's already done. I don't have to do any more work. It's already done. <laughs> we zoom in here and we're like, you know what? I think I actually need a little bit more noise. Because this is a smart object, I can double click the add noise and then I can go ahead and increase the noise that's here. Okay. And press okay. Now this also does have your blend if already built into it. That is having some protection measures for those highest highlight areas. Now this is not necessarily the best fix for using generative fill, 
but it is the only thing I've found that makes generative fill something that I will actually use in my workflow if I need to replace something. And what I absolutely love now is I've already done all the hard work. So anytime, anytime I come into Photoshop and use generative fill, all I have to do is press shift F2. I can easily match the noise pattern and easily match the detail pattern because it's in a smart object. So if you want to get beyond the 1024 limitations of generative fill without having to make multiple different selections, you can use my action. You can download it right here. It'll also be in the description below. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I do sincerely appreciate it. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple, even if that means getting at the granular level so that you can use it in your workflow today.